and uh, member of the scientific board of the Rosa Luxemburg Stiftung, Rosa Luxemburg Foundation. He has published widely on political economy. He is the editor of uh, a lot of uh, unpublished work of Rosa Luxemburg, Otto Bauer, and many other Marxists. Peter, I'm sure you're going to help me with you. Thanks. Okay. Um, well, let me try briefly to remind you of some basic facts about the German economy. Germany is by far the largest and the strongest industrial and high-tech economy in the whole of the EU and in the whole of the Eurozone. It has until this very day the highest growth rate in the EU and in the Eurozone. It is the most strongly export-oriented country and export-dependent in Europe and actually in the whole world. Um, it is extremely well integrated into the larger uh, economic region of Europe, uh, meaning that more than 65% of the German exports go to its neighboring countries in Europe, uh, while only 6.5% go to the United States. You might remember that the German ruling class used to be a very belligerent crowd, <laughs> while they still are only now in terms of world market competition. During the last two decades, they have pursued with full force and full speed a very aggressive export strategy, which is called, and this is too pronged, it means beggar thy neighbor and beggar first and foremost your own people. It's a low wage strategy, it's a low tax strategy, again, uh, which means higher taxes and higher tax loads for normal people, wage earning people. It is a strategy to damage and reduce uh, the welfare state, and it has been very, very successful. The result of it is a real split and an increasing level of inequality within the German working class. We have a split between still about 60% of people who are relatively well paid, stably employed, even long term employed, and something that we had never before. Uh, millions of working poor, a rapidly increasing group of precariously working or precariously employed people. The ratio, the level of that, the proportion of that is going up and up. We have actually, as a result of these policies, now the largest ever low wage sector in the whole of Europe in relative terms, even in the world. Um, we have still, thanks to the German welfare state and large scale wage subsidies, relatively low levels of unemployment, around 7%, that is much, much lower than the average in the European Union. We have even relatively low levels of youth unemployment, which is a terrible problem. On average, is above 20% throughout the European Union. The Germans are below 10%. Uh, Germany has been hit very hard by the world economic crisis. Uh, it has suffered uh, a very large reduction of industrial output, but it's different because there is no real estate bubble, uh, there is no banking crisis comparable, for instance, to Britain or to other European countries. A uh, major economic problem for the Germans uh, at this moment is that they are in netto terms the largest and in, in, in absolute terms the largest financing or contributing uh, the, in, in the largest level to the financing of the European Union and to the financing of the bailouts for uh, uh, countries in debt in the European Union. Let me come briefly to the German left. Uh, the German labor movement actually has invented the practice of mass, very well, very stably organized mass political parties. We still have three of them, although not all of them are anti-capitalist. There is still the Social Democratic Party with more than 500,000 members, very well entrenched uh, in uh, uh, the whole country. Uh, there is the Green Party, which has uh, come out of uh, a lot of movements, environmental peace movements and so on, with at this moment about 50,000 members also very well entrenched. And the only really anti-capitalist party is relatively new. Uh, for the first time since decennia, the German left has not split, but united. Uh, which occurred again in 2007. So it's a fusion of different groups from the East and from the West. 
uh, called the left. It has now uh, about 80,000 uh, members. It is in the eastern part of the country very well entrenched and in the western parts making rapid progress in this direction. It has about 10, between 10 to 12 percent at the polls uh, and in real world uh, votes it's actually very close to that. Um, well, and Germany is also still the country of the largest uh, and richest trade unions in the world, uh, both in the metal sector and in the service sector. We have the largest trade unions that do exist. But the remarkable fact is that we have for the first time since the 1930s now a very well organized left opposition inside the trade unions, cross-cutting the organizational limits, about 5,000 people all functionaries on the middle and highest level. Well, anti-capitalism, is there anti-capitalism in Germany? Certainly. At the polls, in the surveys, you see it everywhere. If you look at them, if you ask people whether they think socialism is a good idea, the overwhelming majority say yes, uh, more than 70%. If you ask them whether they think socialism is viable in economic terms, there are still very large majority, uh, minorities who say yes, which is remarkable because the Germans share the experience of what they all, in majority, regard as a failed socialist experiment. Um, so um, there is something like that, uh, and the, the uh, mood is strong in favor of uh, a change, even a radical change. On the other hand, the left is suffering from the fact that it has no real coherent, or at least it's not perceived as having a coherent economic answer to the crisis, is not perceived as competent in, forms, in all forms of economic fiscal policy, only in terms of social policy. Nobody denies this. They are uh, the best people for social policy, but that is regarded as just spending money and so going in the wrong direction, which is very, very dangerous in a country which is still haunted by fears of inflation. Um, there is space for anti-capitalist reform, certainly, stronger than ever before. If you uh, participate in those debates, there is a very strong interest, and all over the left, including the Social Democratic Party, including the trade unions, for economic alternative, which means in very much detail. Germans are pragmatic people. They want to know the details and how it actually works. Uh, how work does an economic democracy work? Another economic and political system. How does a planned economy, economy work? There is a very broad debate about uh, uh, radical reforms like uh, basic income, uh, uh, the nationalization of banks, and how do we refurbish the public sector. I think that the uh, basic problem that we still have uh, is that uh, neoliberalism has not been uh, defeated and has not been broken. Uh, the hegemony of uh, uh, vulgar economics in, every, in, in, in everybody's heads is very, very strong, and you will feel it uh, uh, wherever you are uh, and whenever you participate in ongoing debates in the left and in the uh, larger uh, German society. This is our central problem. So the German left is not very philosophical. They are first and foremost interested in breaking the hegemony of vulgar economics which are in the heads of everybody. Thank you very much.